Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we're going over the latest best and worst bootay tay. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products, not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Oh, my little potato pasties, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're out in the world, you are having a fan freaking fantastic day so far. It is a gorgeous day outside today. I cannot wait to go and sit in the sun. But has anybody else been feeling like extremely tired lately? Because that is me AF, what the hell? So I need to adjust this backlight. Let's get our shit together today. There we go. So I'm a little bit late to the game with this. I usually try to get these at the end of each month. I mean, I never actually do, but I try. But that's okay, we can kind of go over the highlighted products that I've either reviewed or that I'm just using in my life. And I like to kind of categorize them. Categorize? I'm trying to do categorize and gaze in one and it's not working. It's like two bottoms being in a relationship. Good luck with that, honey. I like to categorize them and start with the yay category, then we have the meh category, and then we finish off with the hell no category. And I have no idea how long this video will be, but I do have quite a little list going, so make sure you pop some popcorn, take off your bra, and get ready to relax. Relax with three X's because we are naughty. Any fucking who, Let's go ahead and start. The first thing on my list is an item that was actually sent to me. I do not need to promote this, but I have been using it and I like it. This is the Good Molecules Rose Water Daily Cleansing Gel. I always switch between this and the Paris Hilton face wash. Like these two have kind of become my holy fucking grails. But I will say, unless I'm in a hurry, like I have a hookup to be at or something, I will use this with a spin brush. So I don't really know if it's the spin brush that's great or the face washes that I use. But since adding this to my routine, I've really thought my skin looked pretty good. So yeah, I'm gonna continue using using this in my Paris Hilton, but I like this so far. Then next, we have a product that I don't actually have anymore because I gave it to a friend. That's the Rare Beauty Lipstick. We tested quite a few of the Rare Beauty items, and this is the only one in the collection that can make it even close to this category. What really did make my nips hard with this collection were the lipsticks. No, they're totally not worth the price. No, they are not long-lasting, but oh my god, they are hella comfy. They remind me a lot of the NYX Moosey ones. I think they have one. I think they're the Liquid Suede. They're very, very similar, but I think they're Rare Beauty ones are a little bit more comfortable and lightweight. I love the color choices and I loved the color that I have. I don't remember what the fuck it was, but it was a beautiful like fire engine red. So beautiful. I did really, really like it. Is it something that I necessarily recommend? Not really. I do think that you could probably find equal or better quality for cheaper, but out of everything that we've tested lately, that honestly was one of my favorite things. Then we have a few little sculpting palettes that I've been addicted to. I recently started using this one when I did my full face of drugstore makeup. This is the Catrice Cosmetics Sculpting Squad. I really, really like it. It has a nice little array of cool tones to it. Honestly, I do kind of end up swirling my brush and everything and just hope that it turns out, but I've not really had any complaints so far, so I guess that's good. And then I've also really been addicted to the Gerard Cosmetics Starlet Slash Sunset and Bind Palette, and it has one beautiful kind of like cool tone and then two really pretty highlighters in here, which I actually use these as eyeshadows. Honestly, though, I think I've used all of these on my eyes, but when I want a really really fierce and deep contour, I dive right for this one. It has really nice pigmentation to it. It seems pretty long lasting. Plus, I think they are always having sales so you can find discount codes everywhere. In fact, I think I have one. Actually, I know I do, but I don't know what it is. I will do my best to check and if I find it, I'll link it to you down below. Do not feel obligated to use my code. I hate pushing codes, but if you want to use it, please feel free to and thank you so much. But even if I didn't have a fucking code, I would tell you the same thing. I genuinely like that palette. Shit, I'm actually kind of grouping everything together. I kind of like this. Next, I guess, is the blushes. In that same video where I did the full face of drugstore, I was kind of introduced to this Makeup Revolution palette. This is, what is it? Honestly, I don't even know if this has a damn name, but it's really, really pretty. It has flamingos imprinted in it. My ass really gravitates towards like salmon and corally blushes, and so this is like a wet dream for me. Usually, I'll just take my brush and just dip into all of these at the same time, kind of like what I do with that Catrice palette. And nine times out of ten, my blush will look fucking fantastic. The one time that it doesn't, it's because I'm drunk and I put too much on. It happens. We love a good Trixie Mattel moment every now and again. Then the next blush, I probably stick my peony into at least two times a week. Wait, did I say peony? I definitely meant brush. Or did I? We'll never know. Anyways, I do love this blush. This is the Lust and Lush from Hank and Henry. It's so pretty. Again, it's a corally shade. They actually have several tones of this. I don't really use the highlighter because it is a bit too deep for me, but the blush, oh my god. The blush is like the perfect gold and coral combo 
though it actually reminds me of my own highlighter double life but with way less shimmer because it's not a highlighter but it's really really pretty it's super duper soft it does have a little bit of shimmer to it almost like a baked quality but it's not like super shiny it just more has like a shift to it they actually have quite a few shades hold on I'll show ya I've not really used my other shades just because I'm a creature of habit and I like to stick to like one thing but they have this beautiful one right here this is opulent and desire by Hank and Henry it's a really pretty pinkish berry tone then there's plush and fervor this is very pretty too and I've used this one quite a bit but unfortunately I have yet to use this one this is ornate and love it's really pretty too but it is for a specific person and that person is not me I love their shit so much I think the only thing that I can bitch about is the packaging like it is so fucking big and bulky like do we really need something this clunky and big fucking no but am I still gonna reach for it pretty much every video yes and then the last bluish related item that I have for this category I'm pretty sure I've mentioned in this style video but this is the Lunar Butete Moon Prism Blush Palette I love this palette so damn much I really hope they come out with like a berry toned one or maybe even like an orangier one I wouldn't even say no to like a red toned one but when I mix these shades together it creates such a perfect combo for my skin tone it just looks so natural so beautiful and it's just like right I love finding like the perfect combination for my skin that actually works it's a rare thing for me to find so when I find it I fucking use it and this has helped me find it it's a good feeling it's like finding a long lost twin except not as dramatic because it's just fucking blush the last item we have in the yay category is a sample that I actually got this is the Maybelline colossal mascara once again this was in my drugstore video and I have been using this non-stop for literally every fucking video that I've filmed since this is the tits man and coming from somebody who has very sparse minimal lashes that normally doesn't give two shits about a mascara I'll just put on falsies this stuff I actually adore the wand spreads each lash it coats it really nicely it doesn't do that weird fallout thing like 20 minutes after it dries it lasts all day it makes my lashes look thick and healthy and there I really like it I can only imagine how fucking banging this looks on somebody who has naturally long lashes like oh my god you will be able to sweep the ceiling with your lashes plus this is pretty affordable I think you can get it from Walmart for like under eight bucks so it really doesn't break the bag if you're looking for a new mascara I definitely recommend trying this oh geez I'm talking so much I'm parched hold on I need some liquid refreshment and not the kind of liquid refreshment that you think I want which I do also want that okay be right back mm. I may have also had a sip of the wine that I'm mulling downstairs so I feel good now what shall we dive on to our meh category the first product in this category I'm probably gonna get shit for saying that I don't absolutely love it but that's where you're wrong I actually do quite like it but it doesn't always look the best on my skin and I can't figure out why that is the Maybelline instant age rewind holy grail for so many people and a lot of people actually commented on the video where I use this and said that you have to let it sit on your skin so that the liquid in it can kind of evaporate and you get a little bit more coverage definitely a fan fucking tastic tip I did that and I love it but some days this actually looks like a shit smear on my face I don't know if it's sometimes the primer that I use if it's the foundation if it's because I haven't exfoliated my face I don't know fortunately 99% of the time it does work which is why it's on the very very cusp of my meh category however what really does deserve its spot is where is it oh for fuck's sake oh it's hiding behind my microphone that is an item that we very recently reviewed the dragon beauty green color corrector oh my god it doesn't even want to stay in my hands because it knows I'm gonna talk shit about it but I actually don't hate this product I think the biggest negative with this is the price like it's 25 or 26 dollars and then with shipping and tax this was almost 40 it was like 37 and like I said in my review this is pretty much a wet and wild lipstick you can get very very inexpensive dupes which truthfully I think these are a little bit better but I'm not positive if they change the formula because out of the three color correctors that this brand has launched this is my favorite is it awful no that's why it's not in the hell no category this did actually diffuse my redness a little bit like a whole lot no like certainly not $36 worth but I've tried this a few times and I really do think my makeup does look a little bit better it might be a placebo but I'm still gonna try using it and so price wise it is a hell no quality wise though it's still pretty meh I don't really know very much about the people behind this brand I don't really follow them don't come for me not here for the drama honey and moving on to our next meh product we have our Natasha Denono palette this too actually was kind of on the little line between 
between the yes and the matte category, but definitely a bit more matte than yes. I really like the mattes in this palette. They are so beautiful. They blend out very, very easily. However, you only get a few mattes in here, and that's the part that I like. I love that you can take the shadows out. I like that this is a nice hard case, perfect for traveling, especially if you are a makeup pro. Not like I was forced to buy this palette, but I do feel like there are a lot of really, really good quality cool tone palettes out there that this doesn't necessarily replace. However, this is a decent palette. Like, the quality is okay. The shimmers are kind of like a hit or a miss. I think I would be comfortable using this on somebody else. And so I guess that does say something, but for me, the price just doesn't justify the quality. And though it is beautiful, it's very, very basic, and I don't need any more basic in my life. I'm enough basic for the whole world. And then we have a palette from a gal that I actually do quite like, but this is not about the people behind it. It is about the product. And that is Miss Nikki Tutorials herself. This is her collaboration with Beauty Bay, and I do really actually like the color scheme. I know a lot of people weren't feeling it, but as somebody who is a full-fledged color whore, this just makes me cream. However, this is in my matte category because it's almost like each shadow has a little bit of a mind of its own, and I know a majority of people don't want to buy a palette and have to figure out how to work with a shadow. They just want to be able to dip into it and use it. I find myself really, really wanting to reach for these colors, but then I'm second-guessed because the inconsistencies are a little bit too much, and I have to figure out, do I want to risk, like, putting on too much or having fallout? Because I can't remember which shades were good, which were great, and which were just bleh. I think I've come to the conclusion that the only way to guarantee that this palette is really good is if you pack the shadows and kind of work a little bit backwards with this, and I think that's why a lot of people really didn't like it. I don't mind it, but is it my favorite palette ever? No. I do, however, really, really like the magnifying mirror, something I thought that I would fucking hate, but it is very, very handy. Oh my god. Shit, I need to tweeze my eyebrows. Damn, I've got a whole North American forest growing in between there. See, this is why I like that magnifying mirror. I love feeling insecure all the time. No, but when I am doing looks, and especially my eyeliner, this mirror is actually really handy. So yes, it's not my favorite, but it certainly isn't bad. Then for the last product in this category, that is Rare Beauty, and I'm talking about the eyeliner. I thought this was my favorite product from this line until I used it the other day, and oh my god, it destroyed my makeup. I was just doing a normal ass wing, but then suddenly it started bleeding on my eyelid, and my wing was getting bigger and bigger, and then it got in my inner corner, and my eyeball was black, and then my eyes were watering, and black was just coming down here, and it was staining my makeup. It was just a fucking nightmare of a shit show. And so, of course, I tried it again yesterday, and the same thing happened. But when I do very, very minimal makeup looks, and I use this, it's actually really pretty. So I think it's just that it doesn't really layer over other things very well. And I also don't love the way that this is weighted. I know that's such a silly problem, but having it this way just makes so much more sense ergonomically. I do absolutely love the packaging, and I know there was quite a kerfuffle over whether or not this brand kind of catered towards individuals who might not be able to open things easily or hold things quite as securely as other individuals, and that turned out to be very, very false. I guess it was purely coincidental, so I really don't understand, like, why it is so back-heavy that just doesn't make sense. But when it isn't smudging everywhere, the formula actually is very, very pretty. It has a wonderful little pointy applicator, if it'll fucking focus. Come on, maybe it won't. All right. But it's a nice pointed bristle applicator. You can get very, very precise with it, but is it perfect? Very far from it. However, it really isn't the worst liner that we've used, and the price point wasn't too bad. I think it was around 20 bucks. I mean, where I'm from, you can get a blowjob and a three-course dinner for 20 bucks, but I guess this is worth the 20 bucks, too. And now, lastly, we move on to our hell no category. Let's go ahead and start with this monstrosity. This is the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. Oh my god. I have tried this so many ways, and I know that for some people this really, really does work, but it does not work for me. Even after moisturizing and exfoliating and priming with the best fucking primer that I have, this doesn't look good. Full fucking coverage, like, I will give it snaps for that. But this just looks so damn dry, and it says it's oxidization proof, which I have to call bullshit. Even when I reviewed this, it was oxidizing in the weirdest places. And then a few people said, well, since it's so dry, why don't you just mix a few drops of, like, facial oil in it? Which I was kind of skeptical to do because normally that would like break everything up, which it absolutely did. But the moment the oil touched this foundation, it went down like three shades. So if you have oily skin, this will 1000% oxidize on your face. You're gonna look either orange, you're gonna look like an Oompa Loompa, you'll look too dark or something. It just is not a good foundation and I'm probably gonna actually return it. No 
Nor was the Rare Beauty Foundation. Oh my god, I do not mean to drag that brand so much, but we did just try them out. But that I actually did return, so I don't have it to show you. But it was very, very pricey. It clung to all of my dry patches, even after I'd exfoliate, even after I did a chemical peel. It just looked genuinely terrible on my skin. I'm sure it looks great on a lot of people, but to me, it was like a tier below drugstore. Yet that shit was, what, like 30 or 40 bucks? And I really do love what the brand stands for with advocating for mental health, but does that mean their products are good? No. At least with my skin, it definitely was one of my least favorite foundations that we tried on this channel in quite a while. And other products on the bottom of my list that I have since returned is the Urban Decay Stoned Collection. This collection, it's not like the eyeshadow palette was like terrible. It just existed. And like an expensive ass palette shouldn't just exist. It should wow me and maybe cook me dinner. This palette did neither of those. And what really pissed me off was that excuse of a highlighter. It was so pretty, but severely impractical. It came in this big bulky little packaging and it looked kind of like sugar crystals. Like, you know, that rock candy on a stick? It looked like that. And if it stayed looking like that, I probably would have kept it and just displayed it on my makeup shelf. But the moment you dip anything into it, it kind of like disintegrates. And it doesn't even disintegrate into like a usable highlighter. It turns into fucking craft glitter. Like every time I would use it, I feel like I was walking out of a Joanne Fabrics. It was one of the most unrelatable, unusable products that we've tried. It was kind of like dating a guy online. Like you see the picture and it looks great and then you finally get it and it's a foot shorter with a micro penis. God, I sound like I'm talking from experience. Point of the fucking story though, both that and the palette were extremely disappointing, so fucking expensive, and just kind of all around a big waste of money, which is hard for me to say about Urban Decay. Like, they are an OG makeup company that I've kind of looked up to for a long time, but lately it seems like their shit has really gone in the toilet. Oh my god, I might have to switch this out for tea because the bitch is spilling it today. Anyways, that kind of concludes this episode. I feel like I've bitched enough. But also, these are so fun to do. Thank you so much for being here. I love having you. And if you'd like to join me on lives, which I will start doing again, I promise I do have a channel dedicated to just lives. It's called Poplux Live. I'll link it to you down below. And if you'd like to support me and my channel a little bit more, please feel free to join us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. There you get videos a day early. You get special Patreon-only content. Plus, best part, it's cheap, fun, and fancy just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload new videos. Video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplex.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at Official Lady, and you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.